Hello and welcome to this section of the circuit analysis tutor. Uh, here we're going to talk about the current divider circuit. The last section we talked about voltage divider. It was when we had a source voltage that we wanted to split up so that we could use a portion of the voltage in our, you know, in our load, for instance. This section is going to be the same concept, except instead of a voltage source, we're going to have a current source, you know, with the arrow, and then we want to split that current into different values. Like maybe we require 3 amps in our circuit. Maybe we only have a 10 amp current source. So we need to find what equations required to split that up so that we know what we're looking at here. So that's the basic idea. Now if we wanted to draw graphically what this means, it basically means that we have a current source. We'll call it I sub S. This is what a current divider would look like. Instead of two resistors in series, a current divider is going to be two resistors in parallel, or at least one way to make a current divider. Right? Now let's make sure we understand this. Let's call this resistor R1. We'll call this resistor R2. And just to make it clear, the current flowing in this leg we'll call I sub 1, and the current flowing in this leg we'll call I sub 2. So you know from experience that the current is going to flow up, it's going to hit this node, part of it's going to go here, part of it's going to go here. This is the current division. The junction points, the nodes, that's where the current's splitting. So when you do a current divider circuit, what you're doing is trying to take your source current, whatever it is, and trying to split it up so that you can get, you know, two amps or whatever it is you need to go into your particular load. You know, I could just give you the current divider equation to show you how to calculate these legs, but really it's instructive to derive it a little bit, um, so you, you kind of know where it comes from, right? What we really know here, let me use a different color here, what we really know here is that there is a voltage here, we'll call it V, and this voltage is the same across this resistor and this resistor and the current source, right, because they're all in parallel like that. So what we can do is we can recall, we know that V is equal to IR, so we can say that this voltage right here is equal to I1 times R1. Wouldn't, that, wouldn't you agree that's the case? Because you have I times R, that's the voltage here. But it's also equal to I2 times R2 because that's the current and the resistance over here. And they're all connected in parallel, so the voltage is the same. But also note that these guys are in parallel. We already learned how to con combine two resistors um, that are in parallel. So if we were to do that and make an equivalent resistance here, the voltage across that equivalent resistance would be the same V as what we have here. So it would be, if we did it that way, it would be I source times the equivalent resistance of these two resistors. In other words, if we combined resistances here, we have a single resistor fed by I sub S, the voltage across it would be I sub S times the equivalent resistance, IR. 